How good is the autofocus in the Canon R7 and in the Canon R10 camera? In this video I'm going to show you just that. Hey guys, I'm Miklos Mayer and I've been testing the Canon R7 and R10 cameras, both with RF and adapted EF lenses. So now let me take you behind my viewfinder and let's go through some of the viewfinder footages I recorded and some of the images that I shot. First, let's see the IAF performance. For this, you need to be in AF servo and the subject tracking should be on and the subject to detect option should be set to people. And of course, eye detection should be enabled. Quite funnily, it also found the back of people's heads as well and tracked them. Of course, once they turned around, it automatically logged on onto their face and eyes. The camera did a pretty good job. It automatically focused on the eyes that are closer to the camera. But if I didn't like that, I can easily switch between the eyes back and forth with this joystick thing. Here I send my model further away and I was half pressing the shutter button, so the AF activated. And you can see first it didn't find the subject, but once she came closer, it tracked her face and then immediately her eyes. It found the eyes even from such a uh, far distance and the focus just tracked her even when she was turning round and round. And most of the time the focus was spot on her eyes. Her eyeballs were sharp, not her eyelashes. Now mind you that as I was shooting I had to hold the camera like this because as soon as I plugged the HDMI recorder into the camera buddies the viewfinder went blank and I had to rely on the screen of the HDMI recorder. So that's why I had to hold it like this and I don't like it because it's much less stable this way. Let's see one again where she started walking towards me from further away and you can see how far away the camera finds and tracks the eyes. It's crazy. And you can see that I'm continuously taking photos. I'm using electronic shutter here with high speed and I'm taking loads of shots. The focus is spot on right on her eyes. Now let's check the sharpness of these images. This is just crazy. This is how 30 frames per second looks. So it's almost like taking a video of somebody, but all the frames are actual, still high resolution photographs. And if I magnify into the images, you can see that all of them is sharp. Maybe there is one or two out of every 30 or 40, which is not 100% sharp but I, I consider this a very high hit rate and I'm really, really satisfied with it. Here is another sequence. And don't forget, I was using 85 millimeter lens at F2, so the depth of field is really, really shallow. And look how the R7 or the R10 for the matter followed her eyes and the focus was right there on almost every frame. As the sun was going down, we went to the shore of the Danube and she sat down the stairs. I really liked this composition, the angles of her body. And you can see it's pretty low light situation here. It's 1 30th of a second, but with the optical and built-in image stabilization combined, I can still handhold it and get perfectly sharp images. So now a backlit low light scene. The sun was going down. I think it was already down. And you can see it's ISO 800 f2 and 180th of a second and the camera find the eyes just fine and the focus was spot on and now this image I really had to edit quite much in Lightroom and you can see quite much noise on her face but then I asked her husband to use a portable LED light to lit up her face a little bit and the pictures just got so much better up until now I was using RF 85mm lens, but let's see how the autofocus works with adapted lenses. So I put the 50mm EF lens onto an EF-RF adapter 
and put it onto the Artem. And let's see how this combination followed her face and eyes. As you can see, the camera found her face and eyes just as well and it's tracking her just as accurately as with RF lenses. Now I'm not going to show you all the images here because it's unnecessary, but all of them were 100% sharp, just like this one. If you liked this video so far, please consider subscribing to my channel and also if you would like to get notified if I have a new video, hit the bell as well. Thanks. Enough of humans, let's see how the cameras find and track animals' eyes. Of course, when taking animal photos, you should set the subject to detect option to animals. First, I had the Canon R10 with an adapted Canon EF 70-200mm f4 lens. I aimed it at this peacock. And you can see, uh, because the head is a bit hidden, the camera didn't find the focus, but then as the head came out, the camera find the eyes even in front of such a busy background. And look how small the eyes are and the camera just logged onto it and the images are perfectly sharp. Wow, look at the eyelids of the peacock. I didn't know it was like this. And now meerkats. Again, Canon R10 with adapted 70-200mm to to lens and look how the focus is spot on the eyes and it's all automatic so I didn't have to find anything. And then the meerkats found me really boring so they went back to sleep. Here, <laughs> sometimes the camera missed the eye but I couldn't really blame it because the ears looked like eyes to be honest so no one can say a word here and just for the sake of showing cute photos here are a few meerkat photos and if i magnify in you can see how sharp the eyes are and now a uh, capybara through the fence with the canon r7 and adapted 70 to 200 millimeter lens i don't know why i left it at f 6.3 i should have used f4 but anyway, you can see how easily it finds the eyes and I'm deliberately moving the camera around so you can see that it tracks the eyes on almost the entire frame. And this is completely automatic. I did not have to do anything. The camera automatically found the eyes of the subjects. I don't know what kind of bird this is a, some kind of woodpecker maybe, but he or she is sitting very close to a dense uh, Livovan fence. Uh, so the camera first is, is trying to focus on the fence. Here I help the camera by rotating the focus ring manually a little bit. But after that the camera found and tracked the eyes perfectly and the photos came out just sharp. Look at this. A peacock which is sitting on the roof in front of a busy and quite bright background and the Canon R10 just immediately and automatically found its eyes and it tracks it. And I had to raise the eyes a little bit because there was no image stabilization here. This is where it gets crazy. Small birds behind the fence. This really small parrot was sleeping and as he heard the sound of the shutter, I was using mechanical first shutter here, he kind of woke up and I tried to catch that moment and you can see it's 100% sharp on the eyes and although it's ISO 800, it's not that noisy at all. I really liked how these two small parrots were kind of fighting on the same branch and you can see the camera automatically found the eyes of the parrot which was closer to the camera of course, sometimes it mistakenly focused on its nostrils, but you can't really blame it. It really looked like an eye. Again, right on the eye. And now they will be fighting a bit or teasing each other a bit. And all the shots that I took here were perfectly focused. And although I used ISO 800 here to have fast shutter speed, you can see that the images are not that noisy at all. So far I've been using whole area autofocus 
and this is when the camera automatically finds the eyes or the subjects. But what if I want to specify in which area I would like the camera to search for the eyes? So I went into Q menu and instead of using whole area autofocus, I set flexible zone. These are basically boxes that you can customize. So with the arrows and or the dials, you can make them as wide or narrow or tall as you would like. So here's how it works. I can either leave that box in the center or I can move that box somewhere. Anyway, if I leave it in the center, I can move the camera around. And when I press down the exposure button, the camera is going to search for eyes within that box and it's going to keep tracking that eye that it first started to track. So this way I can specify which eye or which subject to focus on. So here's another situation. Here I'm using whole area AF and the camera automatically picks the subject and its eyes. But if I want to focus on some other birds, then I should use this flexible zone, either one of them, configure them, so make it smaller with the dials or arrows. Now I have it and now I'm just going to move the camera around and put that box over the subject that I would like to track. You see, I put it over that bird or I put it over that bird. So when I activate the focus, it's going to track that subject from that moment on. And if I let the exposure button go, then it's going to lose the tracking. Enough of the cute birds. Let's see some furry mammals. <laughs> there was this llama again behind the fence. And again, the camera immediately found its eyes. I couldn't believe it. I, I almost couldn't see where its eyes were because the, the eyes are black, surrounded with black fur, but the camera found the eyes. Now, to be honest, this llama didn't really like as I was shooting him. He, di he didn't like the look of the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter lens, which is white. And he became really, really, really aggressive. And there it is. And the camera found the eyes again. And I could have even switched between the eyes. And you can see that the llama is, is um, showing me his teeth. And he was coming towards me. And I had to back up a little bit. Unfortunately, I didn't record any sound here, but it was making some weird sounds. So I backed up. And now a camel again through the fence. And look at that. Even there is something in the foreground. The camera identifies the camel's face. And although it sometimes mistakes, and although it sometimes focuses on the nose, but it really looks like an eye in this case. I don't know what kind of algorithm the, the camera uses, but it's really able to find the eyes of almost any animals, which is just crazy. So let's summarize the autofocus performance of the Canon R7 and R10 cameras. In my experience, the autofocus in the R7 and the R10 is just the same. The, the speed and the accuracy is just the same. And I also did not see any difference when using RF or EF lenses. The speed and accuracy was almost identical. Subject recognition and tracking is excellent, both with humans and animals, and the hit rate is really, really high. So basically, the autofocus is as good as it can get in 2022. I think this makes the R7 and R10 almost like a professional camera and I'm sure wildlife photographers and even sports photographers will love them. That was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one and all the best from Hungary.